So today I'm gonna to try to help you understand the principal shader in Blender, commonly known as a PBR shader, mostly used in games engines like Unity 3D or the Unreal Engine. So I took a photo in my apartment so you kind of understand like what this is about and how you break down materials and understand the material you're looking at and maybe want to recreate. This is a pretty interesting photo actually. It doesn't look as exciting as you might think, but it's actually very interesting. So I'm going to ask you one question. What color does the wall have? And you're probably going to say white. And obviously um, the wall is white. So now I'm going to ask you, what color does this head have? And you might say chrome or metal or metallic or silver or gray. I don't know, gray would be a color, but this is not gray. Um, so these are all wrong answers in the CG world. Um, so we're going to go back to the wall. So this wall is white, but what does white mean? So a white color is reflecting all colors. So red, green, and blue are hitting the wall, bouncing off right into my eye, and I see white. So these colors mixed is white. If I would have a red wall, um, red will go to the wall, reflect into my eye, I see red. I got all the red light right into my eye. And the blue and green light didn't hit my eye, otherwise I would see green and uh, blue. It went straight into the wall and probably turned into heat. So this would be a red wall. So the white wall is reflecting all colors, red, green, and blue. So we go to our head, which is whatever color. What is it reflecting? It's reflecting red. I see red, like of course it's like a mirror. I see green, I see blue. Like It's like a mirror, you know? It's reflecting all colors. So this head is white. So the wall is white, the head is white. So where's the difference? Obviously it looks completely different, but they're both white. So the thing is color explains a part of what this material is, but it's really just one aspect of it. So people often call things gold, silver, yellow, white, but yellow, white and gold and silver are not the same category of namings. So one is colors and one is actually talking about the material a little bit. White is not a material, white is just a color. Silver is pretty much a material, so don't get mixed up with colors and materials. So now back to the picture, so obviously they're different. So what's different? The wall is stone, uh, it's not metal. It's not metal. So we go to the head, obviously you see this is metal. And yes, this is the key difference. So in Blender, there's a slider for this. So metal, yes or no. Um, also one thing to remember, if you wanna remember one thing about PBR shaders, there are materials that are in between zero and one of metallic, but if you just wanna remember a common rule, every material is either metallic or not metallic. So it's either one or zero metallic, nothing in between. And you'll probably not encounter any material ever that is in between. There's just a few materials that aren't fully metal or non-metal. So if you just wanna be sure that your look is probably correct, just always use metal one or metal zero and you're probably gonna do it right. So there's one third value we, sh we should check for on this uh, image. So the wall, obviously is very rough. So this was the third thing you should check for. It's very rough. So we go to the skull and it's very smooth. It's a very smooth skull. So um, now what is pretty interesting. So the skull is white. The wall is white. The skull is metal. Yes, the wall is metal. No, not metal. The roughness of the wall is very rough and the skull head is not rough, so very smooth. So they're actually quite different, except the color is the same. So now something interesting, my coffee cup is white and it's not metallic like the wall, but it's very smooth. So the skull head is white, yeah? The skull head is very smooth and my cup is also very smooth, but still they look very different. And that's because this is not metallic and the skull head is metallic. So in the main, Thing, how you determine metallic and non-metallic and you always have to get this right because your eye will notice straight away that something's wrong if you mess up the metallic or the um, yeah the metallic value so diffuse colors so a non-metallic diffuse surface always has the same amount of roughness so my paper my cup under the smooth surface has the same roughness. So it's very rough. So if you would take off this kind of a clear coat 
under this, it's very rough. Like the whole cup is white, it's very rough. And metal, if you polish it, is silver. So the roughness really changes on metal. So a metal can turn into a mirror that reflects straight on, like it just shoots the light straight back into your eye with no angle, it just goes right in your eye. There's no diffusion, no roughness, but the roughness can change on metal. It can go from zero to one. And you know, there's like rougher metal, there's non-rougher metal, there's a mirror, there's a, I don't know, a very rusty old metal ball that is very rough. But this will barely change. So if you make this rough, it's just gonna look white. It's actually almost gonna look the same. If you polish this, so you rub it, polish, it's gonna get smooth and you're gonna have a slight reflection on top. So this is how non-metallic materials behave. So imagine I've got a wood table and I just like polish it the whole time. It's gonna turn smooth, but the underneath roughness of this wood is gonna stay the same, if that makes sense. So it's gonna look the same, except there's like a smooth surface. But on metal, the whole look will change completely. Um, so we're just gonna hop into Blender. So we're also just gonna hop through all our settings of the principal shader. So you just kind of understand how it works in Blender. So the first that we talked about is a base color. So this of course tells you what colors are reflected. So if I go to red, just on the standard red, this would reflect 80% red, 20% red will be absorbed. All the green are almost, now all the green will be absorbed, all the blue will be absorbed. So 0.8 of the red will be reflected. So this is what we see. You always see what is reflected. So if we make this fully just white, all colors are reflected, we see white. And now we go to the next, because we said this uh, bull's head is white, just as the wall, but the difference was metallic. So this would be the wall, non-metallic. This would be the skull's head, but you still, uh, the bull's head, but you still see it looks different because it's not smooth. This is roughness 0.5. So if I make this smooth, we got chrome. So this is our skull's or bull's head. And if I turn down metallic, we still have a smooth, surface and you can even barely see it which is quite interesting because i'll come to that in a second so if i make this red it's really hard to see so here's the ball reflecting i'll make it black real quick so you see so this ball is reflecting in the surface just as smooth as in the bull's head but you see the diffuse isn't changing that's why if i change the slider you barely notice a difference but if you go to metallic and change the roughness, you really see a difference. And it almost looks diffused at the end like plastic. But why does this look like plastic? Because our eye really just determines the roughness. So because most materials are diffuse, like wood is diffuse, plastic is diffuse. Um, like really everything except metal objects are diffuse. They always have the same roughness. Uh, even the plastic of my camera, I don't know, this cup, everything has the same roughness in the diffusion. So of course the surface can be smooth, but the main base is gonna be diffuse. And this diffuse is always the same. And this is why we can just see straight away, this is not metallic. And the reason why we really see metallic is because the roughness of the base changes and uh, varies, like until it's a mirror or a metallic car paint, like it changes so much that we see straight away that it's, um, metal. So I got one interesting example of a Tamron um, camera cap I had at home. I'm just going to open it up real quick. So here you see, like you kind of see it's metal, uh, the Tamron slogan or uh, text, but it's kind of hard to see. Like it almost looks like light gray plastic. And you're actually right, it does. Um, but it only looks like that because the roughness of the metal is almost matching the roughness of the diffusion on the diffuse non-metallic material. And that's why it almost looks the same. So this is one unique case I actually surprisingly had on my desk where metallic almost looks like non-metallic. So there are cases where it's hard to determine if it's metallic, um, but even if you do it wrong there, it's actually not a big deal because the normal viewer of your image will probably also not know if it's metallic or plastic because it's just hard to see. So that's how your human eye kind of sees if it's metallic or not. So next, we're gonna go to the specular value. 
Um, just keep in mind, just never touch it. Uh, the specular value, so if I, uh, on metallic it doesn't work, I think I'll make it black. So on the specular, you can kill reflections, uh, which is not a physical based workflow. So this should always be on 0.5, unless you want to stylize something. But if you want a photorealistic look, never change this value. Because one thing also to remember, there is no reflection amount there's only roughness. So also actually when I talk to other 3D artists, they often said it's more reflective or it's less reflective, but there is no more reflective and less reflective. What they actually mean is it's very smooth and very rough. So my keyboard is not very reflective and uh, car paint is very reflective, but actually they're both the same amount of reflectiveness, but the keyboard of mine really sprays the light so it doesn't look reflective just spraying and also not everything is hitting your eye so it seems less but actually it emitted just as much reflection and the car paint is the same amount of reflection but it's aiming it straight into your eye so it looks like it's more reflective but it's actually not so never get confused about that it's always just the roughness so back to specular never touch it, uh, there is no more or less reflective. So the next is specular tint, just ignore this as well. This is just for stylizing. If you ever need it, just Google it. Um, you'll never need it. So the next thing is roughness. Uh, we pretty much talked about that. It's pretty much one of the most obvious sliders, I guess. So a rough plastic is very rough and a smooth plastic is very smooth. So this is pretty straightforward. Anastrophic, you're probably also never gonna use, especially there's a lot of workarounds for anastrophic that I actually use sometimes. So you would use anastrophic on the bottom of a cooking pot. So these round discs, this would be anastrophic or uh, a CD or DVD uh, has an anastrophic look. It's this circular roughness kind of uh, created by tiny lines, uh, like roughness basically, but it's circular. Um, that's pretty much the main difference. And the anastrophic rotation is kind of like the roughness in the anastrophic world. Um, but I won't go deep into this. Um, sheen is pretty interesting. So on my skin, there's this slight fur or slight white yeah, fur. And on my t-shirt also, um, or on silk maybe also. So this slight fur on top. So that's where sheen comes in. So I'll just um, do a, a, I don't know, a red shirt. So red is very rough, a red fabric. And then we're just gonna pump up sheen to five. And you see you get this fur look. So of course you could use like real hair, but for this tiny fur you don't. So this is just to get this look in a very uh, performant way. So that's what you would use sheen for in the sheen tint. So next is a very interesting slider. This is also like the specular, not a part of the physical based workflow directly because if we have a non-metallic material, we can make it smooth. And as you can see, there is a clear coat on top, but there isn't a clear coat on top. It's really just a smooth surface, uh, like I explained. So if you make it rough, the surface, like the red stays the same, but the surface gets smooth and less smooth. So this is kind of like a clear coat, but you don't need a clear coat because this behaves just like one. So the only time you need a clear coat is when metallic is one, because now try to create this clear coat look with roughness, this won't work. So if I make it rough, it's rough, of course. If I make it smooth, I've got chrome. If I make it white, I even have, uh, this is blue and not white. If I have white, I've got chrome. So it's really hard to create this um, clear coat look. So now let's say we have a car paint. I make it, I don't know, red. So we've got a roughness in our metallic, like a modern uh, car has. But how do I create this clear coat look? That's where clear coat comes in. So you can add a clear coat on top. So if you're on a non-metallic material, you will never need a clear coat. If you're on a metallic material, like a car paint most commonly, you're probably going to need a clear coat. And the clear coat is not part of the physical based workflow because the clear coat is a separate shader. So the physical based workflow or the metallic workflow is really having metallic and roughness, just as shown uh, multiple times by now. And the, yeah, and the issue is sometimes you need a clear coat like on a real car, but on a real car, actually, they also don't have one material, they have metallic flakes in a certain roughness, and then they add a clear coat. And 
This is also what Blender is doing. It's really adding a separate shader on top inside the principal shader. So this is a client, like an extra, and in a lot of physical-based shaders, you won't find a clear coat. You will actually have to add a clear coat on top, which is a type of a um, glass shader on a metallic shader. So yeah, this is just a cool thing to have in Blender. It's awesome that they added it, but it's actually not really part of the physical-based workflow. It's physical based, but it's separate um, from the originally designed white paper. There was no clear coat. Um, yeah. So then, especially, uh, so okay, also one last thing. So you could create a clear coat with roughness and a color. So a clear coat is basically white, zero roughness, non-metallic, and clear so transmission on so this is a clear coat so you know what i mean so with the physical uh, physical based workflow you can create every material so a clear coat isn't part of this material creation because you could with metallic roughness and color you could create a clear coat so you see this is an extra shader on top if that makes sense so um the clear coat i'm gonna turn it on real quick so that's why you see there's also a roughness on the clear coat because we're talking about a separate physical based shader here on top inside the principal shader. So uh, next, I'm just going to turn it off again. Next is the refraction. You'll never need refraction unless you're using a transparent uh, material, which is, for example, glass or liquid or water or I don't know, any anything you can look through really or plastic. That's when you're going to use a refraction. You can Google all refractions of the different materials. So don't just play around re with refraction. Always Google the value because we can determine if it's red, green, or blue, or if it's metallic, or how rough it is. But what our eye really can't do is um, determine refraction. We only can see that it's wrong, but we can't really see what's right. So just Google the real values and just add them, and it will probably look just fine. So in transmission, um, there is a roughness. So there's two roughnesses here. So you can have a transmission roughness. I'm going to make it white real quick. This is not white. So you got a white transmission at the ball here. So you see, this is like a very milky glass. So this glass has like a ton of bubbles inside. It's like a internal roughness inside the glass. So this is when you would use transmission roughness. There's quite a few materials that actually need this. And yeah, so you might use this uh, earlier or later. So, but the thing is there's another roughness. So if I turn down the transmission roughness, you see we've got a clear normal glass. Uh, but if I turn off on roughness, like in the normal physical based workflow on the top, it looks similar, but it's actually different. It's kind of like a iced ball. So you've got a clear ball, it's like a glass ball, but the surface is rough. And if you would break this ball, the inside will be like smooth again. So this would be this. So when you use a roughness on top, just on the surface, this is when you use this roughness. And if you really have a rough, milky glass that's internally rough, then you would use transmission roughness. But this is a very special case. Um, you'll not encounter these materials very often, uh, but here and then they'll come, so just that you know. So the next one is um, also probably quite obvious, but maybe the name isn't too obvious. This is emission. And this is uh, basically light. So if you really pump this up to 10, um, or I guess even more than 10, maybe less than this, you see uh, it's behaving like a light source. Uh, that's really what it is. Uh, it's a light source. So this is when you have, I don't know, my mouse here. It's hard to see. Uh, there's light coming from it. So you can't use a point light for this or you could with a rough material. But you're probably going to use an emission shader. So that's how you would do it. Um, so the last value is kind of like the specular, something you should never touch. Uh, this is alpha. And this is basically like opacity in Photoshop. So it just uh, turns down the opacity. Uh, this is not a physical based workflow. This is only just for stylizing for maybe, I don't know, infographic rendering or I don't know. Uh, definitely just never touch it unless you really need it. Then we've got the normal input for normal maps, clear coat normal. Also here you see it's a separate shader because there are no two normal inputs unless there's a second shader somewhere. So we do have a second shader. Um, there's a normal map only for the clear coat and a tangent is kind of like a normal input. So I don't know if you remember from math class, but 
uh, normal goes 90 degrees out of the polygon and the uh, tangent is like on like laying on it so you know it was like the it's kind of how steep the polygon is so and it's similar to a normal map uh, a normal input so it's not too important so just remember the most important ones base color metallic roughness maybe transmission so one final thing i'm going to talk about and then i really talked enough so there's multiple ways of making something clear, uh, like invisible or transparent. So you maybe noticed I skipped one value. It was actually the subsurface scattering. I skipped this on purpose because I kind of want to talk about, uh, talk about this at the end. So real quick, I'll make a red material again after turning off uh, emission. So you make this, or let's leave it white. So we're going to turn on... Um, transmission and you see it's like uh, clear as expected it's glass you can look through but the thing is if I put a flashlight behind my ear you see the light in front of the ear like it's also transparent and it's also clear in a way but it's very very diffuse and it filters certain lights so if I glow white light into my ear it's gonna filter out all colors except red so it's only going to let red through because of all my red blood in there. It's going to absorb all light except red. Red is going to shoot right through. So it basically filters colors. So very interesting. Um, so when you're going to need this, I'm just going to turn it on so you see real quick. So you see it's glowing through the ear here because it has a um, thickness. Uh, so here. You see it's glowing through the ear just like this ear and it's filtering colors and where you set the color filtering is here so here you see standard on standard settings it's going to let through 100 percent of the red light point through uh 20 percent of the um uh, green light and 10 percent of the blue light and they have this standard setting because mostly you're going to deal with wax or uh, skin and stuff like that and these are like standard settings for that. But of course you could uh, bump this up to 111. So it lets through all light. So it's a bit hard to see here, but it's letting through all the light. So it's almost like a very rough transmission now and you probably should be using a rough transmission because yeah. So that's like the main benefit of subsurface scattering is filtering out colors. Uh, so kind of like skin. Um, so and the last thing is a leaf is very similar to subsurface scattering, very similar to transmission and maybe even similar to alpha, but it's actually translucent and translucency is used for ear, uh, sorry, not ears, uh, leaves, uh, paper and very thin things where light goes straight through. So if I put a light behind my ear, it's kind of thick. Maybe if you find a thick light, it's going to be similar, but my ear glows red, you know, like if you glow it in your skin, the whole finger just glows red uh, so on translucency this doesn't happen as much it shoots through a bit more but um, not like transmission like glass where you just see through it still covers up most light but it lets through all light and usually doesn't tend to filter certain uh, light so not like my ear it filters all colors and just shoots through red so translucency has more of a diffuse color as well on top it's a bit hard to explain you just have to play around with it it's also a very complex topic um so yeah just so you know there's uh, four different kinds of see-through things transmission subsurface scattering translucency alpha transmission glass liquid subsurface scattering skin wax rubber plastic stuff like that some plastics not all plastics um translucency leaves paper thin things and uh, alpha is like a opacity slider in photoshop so this was a lot of explaining but i think this was necessary um, to understand the principal shader and just the physical based workflow in general so i hope this helped you a little bit to learn how to set your shaders correctly and it's actually very very easy once you understood how it works um, so yeah that's it for today goodbye